What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Oh, it has been a while. You're like, where, Keep? where the f have you been? A couple things. I got a, I got a lot to update you guys on. Uh, I chopped my hair off. Uh, I just turned 30. It's a lot of life. So let's just jump into this video and let's get back into the swing of things. Well, it has been a crazy couple weeks since my last video. And guys, if you aren't following me on Instagram already, please do. It's at Gabe Gallucci Golf on Instagram. That's where I post basically daily my progress. And I've been grinding a ton over the past couple weeks. So if you want to stay kind of in the day-to-day -day hustle of what's going on, go there. And I will, I'm constantly updating things I'm doing there. So give that a follow. First things first. Obviously, you know, from that last video, one of the biggest things I know I need to work on, and it's been a theme throughout this entire journey, has been the mental game. Now, I kind of break up the mental game into kind of like two factors. One is off course issues, right? And so part of the reason why I didn't make videos for two weeks is, you know, I realized I just have some off course stuff, off course baggage. You know, it, it could be even small things like making sure certain bills are paid on time, whatever. Like it doesn't have to be these big magnanimous things. Um, and I just, honestly, I spent the last two weeks just cleaning up a lot of like little busy stuff in my life, just making sure all my stuff is just where it needs to be. And also restructuring some of the things I'm doing on the work side, because obviously, you know, this is going to take a lot of work to get to a plus six, but then also to turn pro and be able to pursue that path. This off season has been a ton of work and I'm just seeing how much work it really takes to get to that level. And so I need to make sure financially I can keep this going um, and stay alive, but also, you know, not let that get in the way of training. One of the things I've noticed when it comes to a lot of golfers, when I've heard them talk about their journey is obviously the financial pressure of doing this can become overwhelming. And so I'm trying to set up my life in a bit so that it allows me to pursue this in a less stressful environment. Now, the second part of the mental game is learning how to control and deal with emotions. See, in my, my job as a music producer, right? I spent the last 10 years as a music producer and audio engineer. And, you know, in that line of work, being emotional is an advantage, right? Like sometimes your worst days are your best days for work because pain can lead to great art. And sometimes when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you are just ready to lose it on yourself, that can yield some of the best music. And so it, it was a tool to be emotional. And, and in some cases I would have to, even on days when I wasn't, you know, as emotional, sometimes when you're writing a song or working with an artist, like you got to ramp yourself up and kind of put yourself in that headspace or put yourself in their shoes. I've spent so much of my life trying to be emotionally intelligent and tune into the vibes of others and, and be very kind of emotional. What's been a struggle when contrast with golf is that golf is like the very opposite. It, it, it's, it's, it's almost, it's healing in that way, but it's painful in that healing because, you know, music and being a creative person almost perpetuates you remaining a broken person in perpetuity. Because I'm of the opinion, you need pain to make great art. You know, yes, there are happy songs, but you know, I don't know, it's just through my own experience and the artists I've encountered, like, it's going through stuff that yields good art. And on the flip side with golf, it's persevering and it's actually healing yourself and becoming more of a complete whole person that allows you to become the best version of yourself on the golf course. And that is a big reason why I did this in the first place. I knew I had a lot of kind of residual baggage that I wanted to heal myself from and golf was going to be that mechanism. And, and so I'm just facing that head on and that has been just what's been happening so i'm being very persistent and very diligent in that process obviously i'm trying to be as patient as i can with myself uh despite how impatient i am with this and how much i want to just go sometimes it, it's a little frustrating uh and i get really hard on myself i'm i'm really good at like just hammering myself as if you saw in my last video in the tournament you know you can you can see the holes I dig myself. So learning how to not do that in the first place and then operate from a position of positivity and peacefulness is the hope for moving forward. All right, so now in terms of my actual game itself. So the first thing is my chipping now is absolute 
fire. I just had my first couple rounds where I was positive strokes gain chipping. And here is why. I've completely changed my chipping technique in the past couple weeks to just this very simple thing. And I'm gonna show you it here. And hopefully this helps you. So the first thing is I go baseball grip. Yeah, no interlock, nothing. Just straight up baseball grip with the thumbs going down like this on the grip, okay? Simple like that. Next thing I do, I put the ball kind of just off the front heel. I get very wide. Now conventional wisdom with chipping is that you have to have this like closed stance and operate like this. I don't know, I'm, I, I don't buy that anymore. I now go wide, shoulder width, sometimes even wider depending on the lie or the angle. Open up the face a touch and I literally just go nice and wide, keep, keep space in between my armpits just like this and this is like the easiest way I have ever chipped in my life. Guys, I'm telling you that new chipping technique is the play, okay? I have never chipped as good in my life, okay? As you see here, on short chips, it's money. Money, okay? Then on long chips, it's even more money. And if you want to control the flight, you either just put it forward in your stance or back in your stance, but you keep the same motion. It's been the easiest way for me to be so confident around the greens that I don't even have to be scared or think anymore if I miss a green, like, all of that fear is absolutely gone with this technique. So give it a try. Let me know in the comments below if it helps you. Now, next up on the docket is the driver. Now, as much as I would love to be a hero and continue to put that long drive head in play, honestly, I realized that might be not the best move on my part at the moment. So I've gone back to my Maverick Sub-Zero head. The reason being is that I wanna hit more controlled drives and just put more things in play. I actually don't have a distance issue. I still hit this plenty long with the Autoflex 505XX. Uh, this just allows me to hit it higher and not have to swing out of my shoes every single time I go up to the tee box because that's just not sustainable. All right, so to show you guys the rest of the game, you know what, I'm gonna play a couple holes here and uh, talk you through some of the things as I go. So we'll do uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18 here at par four, two back-to-back -back par fives, and then finish off with a par four. Let's go. All right, I absolutely crushed that drive. We got 62 yards left. Let's throw a little 60 degree uh, right in there. Oh, baby. Woo! Yeah, that's the best drive I've ever hit on this hole so far. That was absolutely crushed like super straight and there's a speed slot in the fairway that if you hit it straight enough it just kind of rolls for days i wish i had my arcos turned on right now but that that had to have been at least like 330 340 so it's a good day now wedge game has been pretty solid i've been working a ton with my coach max on that he's been helping just kind of you know get me wedge educated as he'll say and uh now for putting because the putts have been absolute fire so putting has become one of my kind of biggest strengths actually over the past little bit. At the beginning of this off season, it was not something I would have said was a, a good part of my game. But you know, I'm at a point now where I just, I look forward to putting and I love the opportunity to make putts. And so giving myself those opportunities is, is one of the most fun things now. That one came off a little weird, but Tap in pars are not, not a problem. But in putting has just become so much more fun now. I love getting the opportunity to putt. In my Arcos data, I have now had a couple rounds where I am positive strokes gained overall for the round compared to my tour player target. That's never happened. So I was able to actually average for five rounds at one point, positive strokes gained putting, which is just more than I can ask for. So it's, it's been really, really good to see that kind of progress. And just between the putting, the chipping and my driver now, those aspects of my game are exactly where I want them to be. And now it's just refining from there. This fairway on this par five always hates me for some reason. I don't know what it is visually. I just aim at that back shed out there and try and just hit it right at it. But I think I've only hit the fairway like four times of the 15 times I've played here so far. So. I don't know, but whatever, we're in play. Uh, this is a 600 yard 
par five from the back. So uh, it's definitely a ways in if you're not playing it downwind. Now the main area that still needs some work and where I've been grinding on for the past couple weeks the most is my strokes gained approach is where I'm losing all of my shots now. So I am minus three strokes gained approach. From about 100 to 200 yards, that whole range just seems to uh, not do well for me, especially actually from the fairway. I lose shots from the fairway, which is just unacceptable, um, which is a problem I've kind of always had, but I've been working really hard on my swing to actually just kind of make it more consistent because I realized there were some things I was fundamentally doing that were causing these issues. So a big thing is when I play with my coach, Max, uh, who's been helping me with time with my wedges, you know, he's a former pro, has played in all the big mini tours in the US and played on the pro tour in Asia. And, you know, when I play with him, there's a level of consistency that guys like him have, you know, and I've, and I've also played with a couple guys who've been on the McKenzie tour. And there's just a level of consistency that these guys have when they play. They do not miss to the same degree that I miss. Uh, I'm still a little wild, you know? Th again, for some context, like this time last year, I think I'd only broken 80 like twice uh, by May of 2020. So you know, to come to this point is pretty ridiculous. Uh, but with that being said, you know, as much as I try and finesse my game, I still have some of that old, you know, crappy golfer still within me somewhere that sometimes can rear its ugly head and show up in my game. And a big part of that is some of my swing was too timing related. Uh, Again, I'm still doing all the Genghis program stuff. I'm still following all of that. Um, but what I've been getting help from Max from, and he actually worked with G George in person down in LA, is just getting my trail arm and my side bend in my swing to be a pro level. And what I mean by that is this, you know, if you look at a professional's swing, you know, at impact, they're here, right? They got some side bend, their chest is some target like this this is where they are at impact now the issue i was having was that because i can use my hands and my arms to get speed i was standing up a little too tall and kind of using my arms to go at it which on days when i was on didn't affect me at all but on days when i'm off it would really really affect my golf game and you know if you've seen my autoflex course vlog you saw a lot of my iron shots kind of flare out to the right and that's because i was just using too much arms and not using my body to rotate to close the club face and so from watching these pros they use their body to close the club face and get to impact correctly and so i've been grinding a ton on that to just make my ball flight more consistent Flared that three wood a bit, and that's an example of not really getting that trail arm at the right impact position. So, you know, I'm still alive, but I could have made it onto the green if my contact was more pure. By getting that face square at impact, you know, I would have been in the middle of the green or at least on the edge and would have had a putt as opposed to a chip now. So that's why we're working on it. It it definitely affects me the most with my irons if I don't do it, but you know. Obviously, it bleeds into other parts of the game if I'm not militant with getting those legs involved, getting the side bend, and properly rotating through the swing. When even through those last four holes, not bad. 
you know, fortunately couldn't get a couple putts to drop. That last one was just evil. Oh, but guys, like I said, I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes to try and get myself to become the most complete human to play great golf. And I feel like I've made some huge strides over the past couple weeks. If I can really get this approach game dialed in, you know, with the confidence I have with my chipping and putting now, I just have to give myself chances to capitalize. And, and if I can give myself some good looks, as you guys can see, like I can put putts close and on the days when they drop, those will be the days I go really low. And, and on the days they don't, well, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll still be able to shoot under or close to par and just bring that confidence into competitions whenever they decide to open up. There was a point over the past couple of weeks where I was definitely not feeling like things were gonna turn a corner in a positive way, but over the past couple of days, all of that hard work has really started to round together. And so that's been a, uh, a really nice relief and a, an exciting development. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for joining me on my 2021 golf journey to get to a plus six handicap and turn professional. I gotta get back to practice because this approach game is not gonna fix itself. Hope you have a phenomenal day and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.